live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering ServiceNow, Knowledge17. Brought to you by ServiceNow. We're back in Orlando, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. We're here at Knowledge17. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Jeff Frick. Donna Woodruff is here. She's service enablement leader at Cox Automotive. Donna, thanks for coming to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. Good to see you. Tell, you're welcome. Tell us a little bit about uh, Cox Automotive and specifically your role. Are you an IT practitioner by trade or business process person? Share with us. Yeah, a little bit of everything mm -hmm. actually. Um, so first of all, Cox Automotive is um, a large privately held organization. It's part of the Cox Enterprises family and we are changing the way the world buys, sells, and owns vehicles. So we are made up of five key solution group areas. Everything from inventory solutions, which includes our auto auctions, and everything to get cars from dealerships to our auctions and back out again for their inventory. Uh, we have financial services, which provides floor planning to our dealerships um, so they can buy cars from our auctions. We have media um, services, which are all about how do you connect um, the cars that you're selling to retail customers. So autotrader.com, Kelly Blue Book, or some not notable um, brands um, as part of our organization. We develop software around analytics and like an ERP system for dealerships to help them move their inventory and, and do their floor planning so, so they can maximize sales in their dealerships. Um, and then of course we have uh, International, we are a global company, we have over 34,000 team members that we support. So we're a very heterogeneous organization and that can drive complexity into the organization. My role is I am the uh, uh, service enablement leader. Um, I am based out of technology, but I look at my role as much broader than that. It's about um, problem so solving problems for our business and, and being able to deliver services internally and externally and, and help the organization run more efficient and effectively. So you've seen you know, the, the narrative in IT and you know, service now has you know, described that very well over the years mm -hmm. and, and IT getting beat up and you know, you know you only call IT when there's a problem and, and, and obviously the platform and the adoption of that have changed a lot of organizations. Presumably you're experiencing something similar. So take us back to sort of the beginning days, the early days of what it was like, kind of the before and after service now, sure. what led you to that decision? What were some of the drivers and how'd you get there? Absolutely, um, well Kelly Blue Book uh, was an acquisition for uh, Auto Trader Group of Companies about four or five years ago and they had implemented ServiceNow as a help desk ticketing system. And so when we acquired them, we saw some um, great wins with the platform that we thought, hey, this, this really should be our help desk ticketing system. And so it brought into cross um, that small group of companies. And, but, but it was always viewed as a help desk ticketing system. And over time, just like many other platforms, it starts to get highly customized. And so um, fast forward to a couple of years ago, we had a need. I was supporting HR and communications from a technology liaison perspective. And the problem that they were trying to solve is that they have two employee service centers, uh, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast, that were staffed by analysts, and they primarily helped our auto auction personnel deal with their benefits and questions around just HR, all the way down to uh, timesheet corrections and things like that. And they came to me with this problem and they said, you know, We've been using Remedy to some extent. Um, we were in a transitional time in the organization where we were collapsing our help desk tools onto service, ServiceNow. And they said, we, we need some help here. We, we just want to do a few requests. Well, um, we identified early on as that liaison that I really think that this ticketing platform can do what you need it to do. And uh, myself along with um, a business analyst and an intern, um, sat down with the business, we understood the requirements, and that was the launch of our HR portal. While we were in there. Just you, an analyst, and an intern. That's correct, <laughs> that's correct. And we weren't developers, it was all about configuration, but we understand, understood the tool, we understand that this is really no different than any other business process, 
and uh, we set out to deliver um, the first uh, service catalog around HR services, and um, since then we haven't looked back. Um, we learned a lot about the platform. We diagrammed out what was wrong with, with how the service desk had been highly customized. We sat down with our VP and we, we just showed him the diagram and said, we think that this platform can do a lot more. And he listened to us and he turned to us and he said, well, do you guys want the platform? And I turned to my team and I said, you guys, we want it? And we, we took it on and since then in the last 18 month, we have expanded the platform very broadly. We've implemented performance analytics to improve our help desk services. Um, beyond the HR portal, we are now implementing governance risk compliance, uh, vulnerability management. We're now doing PPM as well. Um, we are, we are you know, re-looking at our CMDB because we want to do more with automation. Um, we've done some orchestration with um, storage agility and how we can uh, get those engineers more productive by doing zero touch ticket requests from our developers to expand file shares and to, to sunset file shares or to request new file shares with, with our NetApp applications. So what did you do with all the custom mods when you talked about the Kelly Blue Book coming over? Did you sort of scrub the hose and start over? Or well, you... you know what, we took it back to out of the box and it wasn't difficult to do. We just rationalized the things that were duplicated across request and incident. We pulled it back to out of the box. We, we took an agile approach. Um, my team now is very agile. We do weekly releases on the platform. And, and by bringing it back to out of the box, it allows us to upgrade to the latest major feature releases within a two week period. So because of that, we're able to ad adopt and, and, and consume the new product enhancements that ServiceNow has to offer very, very quickly. So, so obviously you had success or you wouldn't have been able to expand the footprint so right. radically. How, how are you measuring success? How did, how did you kind of go from a little bitty thing to a very large thing? You know, I think it's about visibility, visibility and strong leadership support and showing how we're getting better incrementally over time. I think one of the strategic things that we've done probably in the last six months is implement performance analytics, which that started to show the behaviors of how people were working within the platform, how they were addressing incidents, how they were responding to our mean time to response, to our mean time to closure of a ticket, the aging of these tickets. And you know, when we first implemented performance analytics, we found a lot of anomalies in the platform. We found orphaned assignment groups, which said the behavior of the organization, they weren't necessarily working the system the orphaned way they should be. Groups. Orphan assignment <laughs> groups. And you know, tickets were going in and they were backing up and nobody was working them. So it allowed us to change the behavior of the organization right. to drive consistency in how they were using this, which then made the metrics more meaningful. Okay. Now people are running their, their areas of operation from the platforms. So the next thing I got to ask you, we talked about it in the open, is, is behavior, right? Mm -hmm. So tech's hard, but it's not that hard compared right. to people in process. Mm -hmm. And you know, how did you get people at that moment of truth when I need something Mm -hmm. to not send an email like I'm right. used to and to actually execute my work through this tool. Well, one thing we did that was very unique and we've continued to do that is as we roll out major feature functionality, we actually create commercials about um, ServiceNow, about the platform. Internally we call it Service Station. Everything is associated with a vehicle. So we've promoted our brand around the platform as well. And our brand is about doing things more simply, um, getting things routed to the right people. That's why it's better than email. And um, demonstrating the power of what it will do to you and, and getting those answers more quickly instead of going to your favorite IT person or your favorite HR person, how this platform is helping you get to your answers more quickly, as well as all the self-service capabilities and the knowledge articles around, hey, fix it yourself. You don't have to talk to somebody on the phone, but we still give that personalized touch if they really need help and they want to talk to an so individual. So really a lot more carrots than sticks. A lot more carrots than sticks, absolutely. It's if you can solve your problem fa faster, why not? Because at the end of the day, that's ultimately what you want to do. Right. Solve your problem and get on to the rest of your day. And how long does it take uh, for just kind of a typical employee to go, ah, this is fantastic, and, and to, to really shift their behavior and buy in and start selling it you know, as your advocate? 
Um, I think we're doing a better job now of introducing it to our new hires as soon as they get engaged in the organization about this is your platform platform to go to when and if you need help and here's how easy it is to find the things that you need. Um, you know, it, it, it's something that just happens over time and I think if you address some of those, those, those small wins, you create advocates in the organization and when they have a good experience, they tell others. So some of it's word of mouth, some of it is, is internal promotion, um, and a big part of it is leveraging the platform to get the work done and having a great user experience along the way. Donna, you mentioned service catalog and CMDB. These are consistently two components that allow customers like you to get more leverage out of the ServiceNow platform. So specifically as it relates to CMDB, what are you doing there? Do you have a single CMDB across the organization? That's something you're considering? So that's probably considering? one of our next big transformational areas. We do have a CMDB within the platform. It's been used primarily around the linkages for incident problem and change management. Um, but, but we know that we need to do more with it and like I said before, we've grown through acquisition so there's a number of other CMDBs and we are in the process of bringing that all together onto the ServiceNow platform because we're seeing the power of everything else that that connects to and that's also going to be a key on how we promote more orchestration, more automation, um, more about um, the health of our services. So ServiceNow is obviously promoting you guys throughout this event, mm -hmm. showcasing some of the things that you're doing. What have you been talking to other customers about? What are you most proud of? Honestly, I'm really proud of my team <laughs> because we are responding um, to the needs of the organization and, and the fact that you can add value through what you do on a day-to-day -day basis is great. Um, I think one of the most unique things that, that in terms of the application is we actually built an application for um, our, our safety auctions. So as you can imagine, we have 100 auctions. Um, there's a lot of people working in the auctions. We have everything that a, a dealership would have, and we have lanes of vehicles running through to be auctioned off with our dealership. So we have service areas, um, we have uh, vehicles and people moving about the auction. So safety is a very critical thing for our organization. And um, about a year ago, the safety um, director came and said, you know, we have this problem. We are doing these auction safety checklists around compliance and how can we make our auction, auctions a safer place. And, you know, we don't have a lot of money, but we think there's a better way to do it. And they explained the process where they had six area safety managers that were distributed across these hundred auctions and trying to get the safety message out there through making sure people were wearing their goggles or that they had all the appropriate OSHA standards in place. So after having a lot of conversations around this, again, we found service now would be a great solution. So we, we did work with a, with a partner to help us build it, but we took a very manual process and we automated it on the platform. Now we've moved the safety business process to the auctions themselves where they own it. The general manager's involved, the shop leads are involved in it, and what it's done, it, it's been a catalyst to um, reducing our workers' comp claims. We've seen a two basis point um, improvement over the number of workers' comp claims, which is cost avoidance. You know, when your average worker comp claim can be around $10,000, that's a significant saving with a very, very small investment. We saw a 3,000 ROI, percent ROI on this initiative alone. Um, we're bringing visibility to the process using the platform and the reporting capabilities, and, and it's gotten the, the general managers and the shop leads engaged in having the conversation about safety. It's, it's just great, because you, you got the platform piece of it and, and went from the basic application delivery to seeing that it is just a workflow tool. Exactly. And, and, and the benefit of the automation and now applying it to, I don't know, they have a, I don't think they announced a uh, auto uh, auction safety module this no. morning. <laughs> <laughs> so Not really, yet, but we are doing a session on <laughs> that. So. But I mean, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty impactful that you were able to, to kind of see that, execute it with a really small investment, like you said, your initial one with you, an analyst and an intern, and now yeah. really grow and expand the footprint within, within the organization. Yeah, it's really just about 
business processes in general. You know, you've got all, everything, you need to collect some attributes or some information, you need to route it or get approvals around it, and then you can measure it, and you can see what's going on with that business process, and then you focus on how do we improve the business process. It's, it's, it, it, the tool helps enable that and facilitate that. And how has the conversation around IT value changed <laughs> since you started this journey, right? Yeah, yeah. It used yeah. to be very cost-focused, I'm sure. Has it evolved to more of a It is, it's, you know, look, at, it's still cost-focused. Mm -hmm. It's, it's still about savings, but it's also about how do we get things done in an organization more efficiently, you know, with less people doing, pushing paper, and, and actually focused on solving problems. Um, and being able to measure how we get better in the activities that we're supporting, um, and then the dollars will follow. Is there a recognition in the business units that you know, there really is. You know, one of the areas that we're starting to see real recognition is we're now stepping, dipping our toe into customer service management. We are, we are, um, we brought two platforms together um, with, with one of our business um, units that we acquired in the last year. They were doing some things on Zendesk, they were doing some things on another tool, and they were the same team. So um, we've taken that experience, we've, we've brought those agents onto the platform. We are still, we didn't change the experience for the customer just yet because we wanted our agents to be very successful and, and, and help them work differently than through email. We, we pull those channels onto the platform and now they have a, of a dashboard of, of these issues in, in supporting our, our, our lenders and uh, who are our customers. Next is, is really around the portal in, in changing the experience for those end customers um, and, and moving it out of the reply to all with email and making it more measurable. So we've gotten halfway there and, and we see a, a big growth area there for us and making a better experience around our customer support. And, and are you sunsetting some of these other systems as you bring stuff in? We absolutely are. I mean, our, our goal is to um, eliminate all other ticketing type systems. In fact, all of the people that are on those ticketing systems, it's like, when can we get on the platform? We want to be there now. Mm -hmm. Help us get there. Um, but but bringing, things, bringing things together is going to help us across all of our functional areas and supporting our, our customers um, and our team members much more effectively. It, it really is becoming our system of action, where you go to get things done. Donna, what from your perspective is on ServiceNow's to-do list? ServiceNow's to-do list, I, you know, and I've been um, pretty vocal with, with ServiceNow, it's like make, make it easier for us to use and consume the other capabilities of the platform much more, much more quickly. Um, allow us to use the great capabilities um, you know, with some of our external collaborators a little bit more effectively. Um, and I think that's where it is. I, I think ServiceNow just does a fantastic job of bringing more capabilities and maturing all of their service areas. Um, I like the fact that they have two major feature releases a year and we consume them as quickly as they can send them out, probably faster than some other customers do. Um, but, and, and continue to listen to your customers. Just, just listen to what our problems are and our needs are and continue to answer them. And they're, they're doing a good job of that. Well done, I have to say, thanks for all the great products you guys build. You know, the Kelly Blue Book, we've used it for years. Oh, wonderful. Trader, it's a great way to shop for, for vehicles, and uh, so thanks for that. Appreciate You're welcome. <laughs> all right, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really Thank appreciate you so your story. Much. It's a great, great to hear from you. Really from appreciate all right, it. Keep it right there, everybody. Jeff and I will be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from Knowledge17. We'll be right back. <laughs>